Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to Christchurch, New Southgate and Frying Barnet on today, Sunday the 7th of March 2021. You are warmly welcome to our worship service. Today we'll be celebrating communion, so if you can find something to eat and something to drink to be able to take part, and also if you have a candle to hand and some sort of holder so that it's safe to light, um, that would be great too. I'll uh, let you take a moment if you want to go and get those just now. Our service also stars a guest speaker today. I'm delighted to share that the Reverend Matt Harbage has been able to prepare a video sermon for us today. And at this moment in time on Sunday morning, I will be live streaming a preach from St Paul's just across the road up here from the Mance. It's good to work in partnership with other local churches and we're delighted to welcome Matt who's been in the area just a year so he's been in the throes of the pandemic and trying to begin a new ministry. I'm excited to hear what he has uh, prepared for us today. Let's begin our service now in prayer. God you rejoice with those who rejoice. You mourn with those who mourn and you call us to do the same. Help us to come to you today with honesty and openness, sharing our sorrows and knowing your comfort. Amen. Let's worship together by sharing in this song, You Lead Us Through the Wilderness.
Our reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament from Exodus 3, verses 1 to 10. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness, and he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. It's a wonderful story, isn't it, of Moses hearing God speak through the burning bush. So I wonder if you have your candle nearby, and now would be the time to get it. And if you're a family, I would invite you, could you make a burning bush together? You might want to make one out of maybe some twigs from the park or from your garden and maybe some material or paper to make it look like flames. Or here I've made one out of Duplo. Why don't you have a go at making a burning bush? And if you're a bit older, you can do that too or you can get your candle and we will light them together. So if you would gather around your fire or perhaps take your match or lighter and light your candle. We're going to use this fire to help us to pray, to help us to approach God, just like Moses did in the desert. Moses saw the bush at a distance as it was burning and decided to find out more. So let's spend some time together trying to discover God. Let's pray. Lord, we are here now. Please, would you meet with us? The first thing that Moses did as he got close to that bush was to take off his shoes. I wonder if you might do the same. Can you kick off your shoes and prepare to meet with God? And now let's pray. Let's say these words together and um, do the same action as well. God sees us. Ready? God sees us. Dear Lord, we are sorry for times that we have been silly and said silly things. We're sorry for doing bad things. Thank you for being loving and kind towards us. Amen. God also hears us. God hears us. Can you do that with me? God hears us. 
God told Moses that he had heard the cry of his people. He had heard their sadness. Are you sad? Are you sad about anything? Let's spend a moment in quiet and pray. Tell God what you're sad about and ask him to help you and anybody else that you know who is sad. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you hear us. Lord, if we're sad, help us to talk to you about it and let you help us. Amen. And the third thing that God does is that he sees us, he hears us and he helps us, he leads us. So um, let's do this. God helps and leads us like this. Can you do that? God helps and leads us. If you want to take a look at your candle or your burning bush that you've made. God spoke to Moses through the burning bush and he can speak to you too. So let's ask God to speak to us now. Dear God, as we sit before you today, we ask that you would speak to us through wind, fire and still small voice. Help us in these difficult days to be still and to listen for your voice to lead us. Amen. Please do take a look at our website for the TAFE colouring sheets and activity sheets with lots of ideas of activities that you can do with your family and also some really important discussion starters thinking about that story of God and Moses and you can use those to talk with your children about what it might mean for them today. I've also linked a cartoon version of the story which includes Exodus 2 and 3 so it's a little bit longer you get the story before um, Moses meets the burning bush and the burning bush. Enjoy. It is my pleasure to welcome uh, Reverend Matt Harbage today from St Paul's. We're delighted that he could join us and I'm just going to pray for him before he preaches now. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for that beautiful scripture that talks to us about how you speak to us, that shares us uh, a real vision of how you can call us and ask us to be part of your mission. Lord, as we think about what it might mean to be seen and heard by you, Lord, I pray that you would bless the words that Matt has prepared and I pray, Lord, that you would speak through him by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. It's wonderful to be with you. It's a real pleasure to have been invited by Reverend Ruth to share a reflection with you this morning. My name is Father Matt and I'm the new vicar at St Paul's New Southgate. I suspect I won't have met many of you because my wife Catherine and I only moved in two weeks before the first national lockdown. So we've been here just about one year. It's been a roller coaster of a year for all of us, hasn't it? Ruth and the other church ministers have given me a very warm welcome to the area. My congregation have been great and I love this area. I love meeting new people and discovering new places. First and foremost, I want to say a really big thank you to all of you who have donated to the food bank that we've set up at St Paul's. It's been really quite moving Monday by Monday, seeing a small crowd of people gather to receive from the food bank. We can only do so much and it is a very small thing, but families genuinely look lighter as they leave the church carrying their heavy bags of food. It's perhaps a little bit like those who find water at a well in the middle of a desert. And I understand that desert has been the theme there at Christchurch over these last couple of weeks of Lent. Desert worship. The desert is a richly symbolic place in scripture and in the Christian life. It's a powerful metaphor, but for what exactly? The desert is certainly not the promised land. 
That land is described as flowing with milk and honey. The desert is barren and empty. As Bishop Tom Wright explores, the desert is harsh and unforgiving. For all these reasons, the wilderness was feared. For people in Bible times, it represented the unknown, danger, failure and mortality. Perhaps it's not totally unlike our Covid lockdown world, with all of its danger and unknown and the sense of our mortality. And yet, and yet, as we know, the desert is also a place where God is powerfully at work providing manna, food, God revealing himself, like in the burning bush. The desert is a place where God equips his messengers, as we see in John the Baptist. The desert is also a place where Jesus himself retreated to pray, to find space. The desert is a place of silence free from distractions and the busyness of the city. Perhaps, more than anything, the desert is just that, a place of silence. It's in that silence that we have a place for potentially a very honest and very real communion and conversation with God. A place, too, for us to listen to our hearts, to hear our deepest cry. Now, if you're anything like me, finding silence and entering into silence can be really quite hard. I'm sure, perhaps like me, you quite naturally reach for your phone or or maybe the TV or the radio or a book, something to keep our minds occupied. But if we dare to stop, that's when we might discover our own burning bush. Let's turn to our passage from Scripture, from Exodus chapter 3. Here we pick up Moses' story. He's in hiding, having run away from Egypt. Moses has become a shepherd, and it was in the wilderness, in the desert place, that Moses encountered his burning bush. There's an old rabbinic saying that others passed by the bush whilst it was ablaze, but only Moses turned aside to see. What if there are many burning bushes in the world waiting to be beheld? This idea is picked up in a poem uh, by the Victorian poet Elizabeth Browning. Earth's crammed with heaven, and every common bush is a fire with God, but only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around it and pluck blackberries. Do we, in our lives, take time to stop? To be still? To look for the signs of God all around us? What would we hear? Would we hear God call out our name as he called out Moses? Now, once God meets with Moses at the burning bush, what he says next to Moses says a lot about God's character and I think gives us something to pray about and to pray into over the next few weeks and months. The scripture says this. The Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, to bring them up out of that land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. 
the author of Exodus there, wants to drive home a point. God saw the misery. God heard the cry. God knows the suffering. So God comes to deliver. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't need to tell you that we are living through hard times. If we bravely stop and listen to the silence that the desert brings us, we might get overwhelmed by the voices struggling in anxiety, in illness, in grief, in practical difficulty. But whatever we see and whatever we hear or however we feel ourselves, remember, God sees, God hears, God knows, so God comes to deliver. The Bible is full of texts of lament, of people pouring their hearts out in sorrow, from Hagar to David, from Paul to Jesus. The prayer of distress is a prayer that God hears and that God answers. God does not ignore this prayer. I wonder if in the silence of the desert, you might discover too your own cry of pain or of anxiety or sadness. I wonder if you can give it a voice to let it out. Because it is a prayer that God answers. As the psalmist writes, tears may flow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Sometimes that night can feel very long indeed. But nonetheless, as we journey through our desert worship, if we dare to stop, if we dare to listen, we will discover our own burning bush. God is there. God is there always for all of us. Dare to listen to that cry of despair in the world and perhaps the echo of sadness and struggle in our own hearts too. Let those cries rise before God. Do not be afraid of them because God listens, God sees, God knows and God comes to deliver and save us. I want to end with a prayer by Charles de Foucault, a man who knew the desert well, both, both literally in the Sahara and as a priest and a monk. It's a prayer of desert worship. Let us pray. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart, for I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself, to surrender myself into your hands, without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. Amen. May God bless and encourage us as we journey together as Christians in our neighbourhood. We share in communion today, so if you have your something to eat and something to drink to hand, now's the time to gather them. If you would please say these words in bold. 
we gather at tables of different sizes and shapes, used for various reasons over the weeks and months. Ordinary tables laid with something to eat and something to drink. Each table tells a story. Today the story it will tell is the story of 2,000 years of history where God's people have gathered to remember the first night that Jesus shared this meal with his disciples. So come in faith to your table. Be reminded that we are not alone. Come in faith to this meal, you and I. Come to be nourished for the journey ahead. For some of us are fresh and some of us are weary. All of us are aware of our failings. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for all you have given us, offering rest for the weary, strength for the weak and hope for the hopeless. We thank you for this meal that speaks of healing and nourishment found in your love. We thank you for this bread and this wine on different tables, on different plates, in different cups and in different places, each one a symbol of your body broken and your blood shed for us. We sit together yet dispersed, yet we praise you, Lord. Amen. So we gather at many tables today with bread and wine, with something to eat and something to drink, scattered yet together to remember. So would you please take your bread and break it and eat it. This is Jesus's body, which is broken for you. Let us say these words together. Though we eat from many loaves, we remember that in Christ, we though many form one body and each belongs to all the others. Amen. And if you would take your cup and hold it and we will drink together. For this is Jesus' blood shed for you. He offers you forgiveness and calls you his own and restores your soul. We say these words together now. Though we drink from many cups, we remember that in Christ, though we are many, we form one body and each belongs to all the others. Let us drink together. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew us and remake us. What we have been is past and what we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on and make our story your story. Amen. Let us pray for the world. Please would you say the words in bold. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Lord, we pray for those who feel forgotten and unseen. May they know that they are remembered and seen by you, God. Help us to partner with you to remember the forgotten. Search our hearts, Lord, please, to reveal those that we hide our faces from, the outcast, the stranger, or the homeless. Change our hearts, that we may turn our faces towards these people and recognise each of us as your children. We say together, How long must I wrestle with my thoughts, and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Lord, we pray for those who struggle with ill health. We pray for their healing. We pray for those who struggle with mental illness, anxiety and depression. We pray for their healing too. We pray that there will be resources released to help through good mental health services nationally. Help us, Lord, please, to be a friend and a listening ear to those who suffer. Fill us with your compassion and wisdom. 
We pray, Lord, for those who wrestle with sorrow, that they may know your victory over dark thoughts that seem to triumph. We say together, look on me and answer, Lord my God, give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. Lord, we pray for those who might be considered fallen by those around them. May they know your restoration and grace. Help us not to judge or exclude, but lift everyone up in prayer, embracing each other with the grace that we know in Christ. Thank you, loving Father, for hearing our prayer. And we say together, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. We close with a song, Oh Praise the Name. It's linked on our website or on our playlist for this week. A blessing. May we each know we are loved by God, seen by God and heard by God. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>